Hi, I'm Daniel Anderson. Welcome to Rock Studios. I'm here today with Adrian Jecker, Director of Software and Controls for Asia Pacific. Hi, Adrian. Hey, Dan. We're going to talk today a little bit about artificial intelligence, which is on everyone's lips. Um, Adrian, perhaps you could talk a little bit about some of the recent research we've done around AI as part of our Set of Smart Manufacturing report. Yeah, so this report um, is a survey with uh, over 1,500 manufacturers, and we've asked questions about the use of technology in, in manufacturing. Um, one of the questions that we asked was, what was the technology that had the highest ROI in the past 12 months? Um, and when we ran the survey at the end of last year, uh, number one was cloud and software as a service, and number two was generative AI, which is mind-blowing considering that 12 months prior to that no one even knew in manufacturing about generative AI. So that's that's a surprising fact there and also very surprising um, is the fact that for the next 12 months in 2024 the number one planned area for investment is generative AI in manufacturing. Yeah well it's it's certainly on everyone's lips. Um, AI in manufacturing isn't new, generative AI is. Um, Maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of the ways that AI has been used previously and how that will change with generative AI. Yeah, so as you mentioned, AI is not something necessarily new, but um, it has been slow to adopt in manufacturing. Uh, in fact, it needs a lot of domain expertise or traditional needed a lot of domain expertise and a lot of compute power. Um, so it wasn't pervasive across the manufacturing space. Some of the areas where AI or machine learning specifically had been applied is in things like um, anomaly detection. So to predict that something's about to go wrong with a piece of equipment and then take action uh, to, to rectify that. So that's, that's a common way. Then modeling specific processes to, to optimize them is another way uh, in which we've used um, AI or machine learning specifically for things like model predictive control. Okay. And how do you see that changing as, as I guess, the, the new era of generative, generative AI comes into play? I, I would say maybe uh, on those use cases that I mentioned, what's interesting and what we will see is that they'll become more democratized. So we'll see those more broadly adopted in manufacturing without the need or uh, such a heavy need for uh, data science and expertise. So we'll be able to roll out some of these use cases much more broadly, uh, much more quickly um, with things like unsupervised learning. So for example, for anomaly detection, as I mentioned before, um, we've just introduced a, a platform called Guardian AI that can take input from existing devices, so electrical signal from drives that are controlling pumps and, and fans, and, um, and then model what a normal situation looks like and uh, learn that over a short period of time and then detect that something is about to happen and then alert about the impending fault and what type of fault that, that will be so we can take action and apply that very broadly across a, a factory in a very short period of time. Yeah, sounds like an exciting future. Absolutely. Um, we can do a lot of Rockwell automation, but we can't do everything alone. Um, who are some of the companies that we're partnering with uh, around this? Topic. Yeah, so I mean, we're very proud about some of the partnerships that uh, that we've announced uh, recently. Um, so one is NVIDIA. So we're partnering with uh, NVIDIA around uh, their Omniverse. Um, so Omniverse is a space that will be used to, to simulate and train some of these models. It's kind of like, uh, I think their, their CEO, Jensen Huang, spoke about it as a gym for robots. So robots need a gym. Uh, which is a, in this case is a digital representation of a physical world. In our space is a digital factory uh, that can be used as a safe training environment for robots and for AI to test different control strategies and, and optimize without really touching the physical equipment or the plant. Once uh, things are optimized, we can apply those models to, to the running. I love uh, that analogy. Yeah, to, to the running plan. So that's uh, that's a way in which we're partnering is by integrating our simulation of uh, factory floor equipment 
into NVIDIA's Omniverse through an API. So NVIDIA's Omniverse can um, connect to different types of simulation, pieces of simulation to build an entire factory, not just with Rockwell equipment, but with other third-party equipment and provide that holistic uh, simulation environment so we can train these robots and, and models. Fantastic. That's one of the partnerships that we have. The other one is, uh, this has been a, a long-term partnership that we've extended at the end of last year with Microsoft. Um, and so this extension of the partnership is around the use of their um, Azure Open AI um, for generative AI, specifically into our new design capability. So our Factory Talk Design Studio is starting to embed generative AI and uh, we've just launched this month a co-pilot uh, that sits side by side with the design environment and so users can ask questions about how to do specific tasks within the design environment and in the future they'll be able to do things like um, ask for the copilot to explain a piece of code or generate a code based on a natural language prompt. So super exciting and a great way of bridging the skills gap of the, you know, the traditional automation um, domain expertise and the new generation of workers and engineers coming into the space. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting future. Uh, if there's any of our viewers that maybe aren't as technical, what, what would be a real world example in, a, in an industrial setting of, of how this AI could help uh, them to be more productive or more sustainable? Yeah, I, I, there's a, a really nice application that's very tangible uh, in which we were able to apply machine learning to model a process and improve significantly. Um, in uh, food and beverage plants, um, a very common process to fill a container with the product. So uh, think about a, a tub of sauce or, or mayonnaise or something like that that gets filled. Uh, the manufacturer has a commitment for a minimum volume or, or mass of product that is delivering to the customer, which is printed on the label. And so anything that is below that, that volume needs to be scrapped. Um, and then anything that's over, it's considered in the industry, it's called giveaway. So it's, it's additional volume that the manufacturer didn't have to provide, but uh, it's, it's included because of an, of an error. Now, filling this at a high speed is, uh, is a challenging process to do very accurately um, because the variables are, are changing very rapidly and very difficult to measure. With AI, we're able to model that process and using different inputs, predict what the final volume of that container will be before it happens and then correct it on the fly to minimize the giveaway. So uh, we have an example of, uh, of customers that have been able to reduce the giveaway by 50% while also reducing the scrap of uh, this type of application by using machine learning um, to control the process. So less waste and, uh, and more profitability for, for the customer. Exactly. Excellent. Well, that's very interesting, Adrian. Thank you so much for your time today on uh, Rock Studios. Um, I've certainly learned a lot, and uh, it's a space that we'll keep continuing watching. So, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>